Hey folks, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. So today I'm going to install a brand new cellular signal booster into the RV. Um, this one is from a company called American Booster. Uh, they contacted me months ago asking me if I would install and review this, but I decided to wait just before we left on our snowbird trip, and that way I'll be able to use it especially down the Oregon coast I find that's one place that I usually need a cell phone booster um, just because the signals are, are uh, quite uh, flaky as you go down the coast with the mountainous terrain and and the ocean and everything so I'm going to install this today um, and show you how to how I install it and give you a look inside what you get and then in a few weeks time I'll come back with my full review after I've used it um, a lot of people uh, probably know that I've used the Wii Boost for several years. I installed their Trucker Edition and also their RV Edition. And uh, it's been pretty good. It's kept us connected in fringe areas and that. But uh, always nice to try a different company. So, you know, look at what it, what it entails. It's a pretty simple install. Um, install the antenna, you know, it's shown here on the, the RV ladder. Then there's the amplifier part to install somewhere in your rig. And then they have an antenna that sits on a desk or whatever so that you can boost your, your cell signals. So you want it for your cell phone for better connection for talking and texting on your cell phone and also for data. Um, we used ours mainly for data. We have a, a Verizon hotspot and uh, a lot of times we only get one bar or so when we're getting slow speeds. We turn on the booster and it'll boost it up a couple bars and the speeds will increase. So it comes in handy sometimes. Uh, I find less and less these days. Um, a lot of the carriers are, are pushing their, their cell coverage more and more. So a few years ago I found there it was a lot more um, important to have a booster. It's less and less now but you know we visit a lot of uh, boondocking areas are kind of in fringe, so it really comes in handy for us. You can kind of see by the graphic here, you know, the cell signal sends to the, the outside antenna, and then it comes through into your RV through a wire, through the amplifier signal booster, and then it's rebroadcast into the RV. Um, now, the biggest drawback I found with the Wii Boost was I wasn't getting very good coverage in the RV. I had to put my devices quite close to that inside antenna. So it'll be interesting to see if this is an improvement or not. Um, it wasn't a big deal because I could just put my uh, my hotspot right beside the antenna and get the full full thing, but it didn't really broadcast all the way in. And that could be because my fifth wheel really isn't a metal shell, so the isolation between the outside the an and the inside antenna wasn't really a great separation. So. Um, we'll see how it goes. Let's take the box apart and we'll see all the pieces that they give you inside. Okay, this uh, twigs my memory there. I remember the Wii Boost was the same, all kinds of boxes. But I guess what they're trying to do is give you the steps. First you install the outside antenna, then you run the cables in. Step, step 3, install the signal booster. Step 4, install the inside antenna. Step five, power, that sort of thing. So I'm going to continue opening things so we can see exactly what the components are. Wow, lots of packaging. <laughs> Holy crap. Anyway, um, there is quite a bit of stuff in this kit. Um, I would expect there to be a decent amount of stuff given the price. It goes for about $4.99. Um, pretty comparable to the WeBoost system that, that it's uh, going up against. So let's go through the pieces here. There's your antenna for the rooftop. Comes with a U-clamp to go around a pole or a ladder. And you get some uh, zip ties and 3M sticky things for cable, running the cable around. And this thing is to go through the wall of the RV. So you drill a one inch hole in the side of the RV and run the cable through that. Myself I'm not going to do that. I already have the existing uh, wire run. I went through a junction box on my roof. I'll show you when we go up there but I also use it for my rear view camera so I'm not going to go through the side but they include all the pieces to do it. And then here's your external cable and that goes on to the antenna 
and then you run it inside to connect to the amplifier inside. Looks like pretty thick, decent uh, outdoor cable there. there. There's sort of the diagram in the instruction manual. You can see it comes down through the whole little clamshell thing and then you'd run the wires. Inside antenna really like this compared to the old one, the WeBoost one. This is really a heavy piece of metal here. They have kind of a, a really sticky rubber type bottom so it'll really stay in place. And then here's the little antenna and it screws into that. Once that's screwed in it's really hard for it to fall over. It's going to stay wherever you put it. So I like that. And then there's a, a length of cable to hook up to the amp as well. And then here is the, the booster amplifier itself. Voltex 50. Very similar to the, the Wii Boost one. And you have two ways to power it. You have a, a wall plug. 12 volt output, so you can plug it up, plug it into your any AC outlet, and run into the amplifier. But also, which I'm really happy to see, is a hard wire, so you can hard wire it into the the RV's 12 volt, and then you won't have to, to think about it. Especially if you're off grid and boondocking, you can run it right off your your battery system. And looking in the manual, it draws a max of about three amps. Looks like they even included a fuse in there. And just a quick comparison, since I have both, this is the new American Booster antenna, and this is the Wii Boost antenna. Very comparable. Maybe the American Booster one's slightly bigger, just on the outside. That's the plastic shell. I'm not really sure what's on the inside of them. And the inside antennas here, this one's a little smaller. I do, like I say, like this better as far as uh, that heavy, heavy base. This one was a little more floppy, a little more lightweight, had kind of a rubber bottom on it. Especially if you are if you have a motor home and you're moving while you're using it. With our trailer I never really moved so it wasn't a big deal but I can see it being, if it's in a, a motor home or like a class B or C and you're actually driving rough roads, that would be a better antenna. And then here's the two amplifiers, this one is actually a little bit smaller than that one. It just has the, the the LED that tells you if it's connected properly or not. This one actually has some numbers printed here and I imagine that's the different cell frequencies. So it does give a little bit more information. Flip on the back. They're both about the same weight. Oh, I forgot to say that uh, American Booster sent that to me free of charge. I didn't pay for it. I'm not affiliated with the company in any way, and, and I'm, I can say whatever I want about it in the review, just so you know. And first thing we're going to do, I'm going to install the inside stuff first. It's a little windy out there still, my thread of rain, so I'm going to do the inside. So I'm going to install the booster and the antenna and power it up. And where it's going to go is the same spot I had for the, the other booster, is these uh, cabinets up here. So you can see that white wire coming down, that's coming from the outside antenna. I'm just going to do the same thing with that. And I'm going to mount it in the same place that I mounted the other one. And then for power, you can see it goes up, the power in the antenna will go up into this hole up here. And what I did is I wired a switch. So I took some power off one of the existing uh, lighting circuits here that had 12 volts going to it. And I spliced into it and installed an on-off switch for my cell booster. And that's been really convenient for me. And then I ran the internal antenna wire comes out of here. It's kind of spooled up. There's a big cavity behind here and I can spool it in there. Then I can pull it out when I want to use it and run it down to where the antenna sits beside my computer and phones and stuff. So I'm going to repeat that. It's been very handy for me. So let's get the, the new system installed up there. So I've ran my inside cables. Over here I hooked into power like I explained before. Um, on the end of that hard wire 
uh, there was a red uh, wire and a white wire. Uh, the white wire was ground, the red wire was positive. Hooked it into the 12 volt system. Uh, if you want to know about um, finding out polarity, because you, you don't want to hook it up backwards, so the red was the, the positive 12 volts, so you got to find the positive 12 volt. I did a, a video a while ago about uh, how to test with a multimeter, so I'll link that in the description for you. Anyway, so I've hooked into that switch, so when I turn on that switch, it's going to power the power wire, and I also ran the antennae here. This is probably where it's going to live here most of the time. Um, and then I ran, like I said before, the, the excess cable into there. So I can pull this out. And I've also got some clips here. I can clip it along if we're in a position for days and days. And I can have it set right on my table there. So it's strung along there. If you're wondering what this curly co cord is, that's for my dash or my uh, rear backup camera that sits on the rig. And when I, when I go to travel, I just push that in and then it powers the camera for me. So that's what I've done with that. That's why that's there. So I ran the wires along and I've hooked temporarily into here. I think I'm going to mount this against that wall over there so I can open this door and be able to see the, the indicator lights. So I'm just going to do a quick test to make sure I have power. I've just hooked up the the antenna just so there's a load on it just to see if everything lights up. It's supposed to light up and go solid green if it's working. There we go. So it's flashing. I guess that is it's booting up. It should go solid if everything is okay. There we go. So it looks like everything's working so I'm going to get up on the roof and mount the antenna and then run the antenna wire in and finish mounting this uh, amplifier. Just show you the connector here. I'm pretty impressed with the connector they gave you. It's a nice big outside connector and it's weatherproof and everything. And then this is the inside connector that connects to the amplifier. And it looks like we have 20 feet of uh, cable. Okay, got the old antenna wire out and the new one fed. Just decided to stop, give you a tip. Um, for feeding the wire, I'm just using this 1 8 inch uh, drill. It's like a super long drill bit. And I can tape that on there. Uh, when, I, when I drilled through, I had to go through. Like, this isn't the roof. This is like a sub roof to the main roof. So there's about a gap like that I had to go through. So... I used this. This is really good for dr dr uh, drilling pilot holes too because it's only an eighth of an inch. So when you're feeding through you can slowly drill through with it. Also a great tool for feeding the wires. Anyway, I'm going to pull the rest of that through and continue on. Well, it's just a tad breezy up here today, but at least I got some sunshine for working on the roof. Give you a look at uh, where I ran the wire. So I put it back on the ladder like I had before and then I'll run that wire along and into my junction box. You can see here's my backup camera. It goes in there too. And then that's where it goes down below. So uh, I'll just have to clean all that up. Maybe I'll wait for a less uh, blustery day. I'll just put the cap on for now. But you sort of get the gist of it. Antenna mounted on the ladder antenna wire into junction box and down below. There we go. Like I say, on a warmer day I'll make it uh, seal it all up nice and pretty like and I'll run another uh, piece of a turnabond tape to hold that wire down in place. Also got an idea. I got uh, one of these from the Halo View. It's for uh, it's like a magnetic mount. So I think what I'm gonna do is attach that to the lid of there is if you remember, this is where my weather station was positioned. And on the bottom of the weather station, rather, screw, rather than screwing the, the base of the weather station into this, I'm going to put a, a piece of metal on the bottom of the weather station. So then when I get to camp, I can just go with the weather station and she should be all ready to work. And then when I leave, I can just take it off. So I think that'll turn out to be a good idea too. So let's go down below and uh, test out the system. Back in the rig now, and I've cleaned up all the wiring, tidied it all up, and mounted the Voltex 50 uh, 
amp on the wall there so I can just open it up and see the, the readouts quite easily. And this uh, antenna will just stay stored here when we're traveling. It's so heavy I don't think it's going to come off. So let's uh, check out some of the signal strengths here. So I've just done a quick test here. Not a lot I can do. I'm in really strong cell, cell signal range here. But you can see with the booster on and the phone beside the booster there, I'm getting really good signal, somewhere between 50 and 60. So let me turn it off here. You'll see it drop down. Just takes a moment to register on the app. You can see it dropping back. If she goes back somewhere around 80, which is still good, that's why I can't do too much tests, but it, it does give a, a good boost. So what I'm going to do is on our trip south, we're going to hit a lot of patchy areas, especially if we take the Oregon coast. And uh, I'll do some really in-depth testing and come back in a few weeks with a with a full review on on how it's performed. Just wanted to get the the install done and introduce it to you. So stay tuned. Till next time, Ray from loveyourv.com. Cheers, everyone.